Hello everybody and welcome back again to Let's Play Disco Elysium. So Harry finally had its big night, he finally got to sing karaoke and it was okay, I guess. At the very least it was interesting. But now we have to get back to work. Um, I already put on my standard outfit again, but if I remember correctly, I also had some skill points to uh, spend, or one skill point that is. So maybe let's do this before we continue. Um, I remember there was one skill I wanted to increase in particular, and I think it was hand-eye coordination. Because I got that thought that gives me plus two hand-eye coordination against enemies wearing a fallen armor. And that is so oddly specific. You know, it's got to play a role at some point, so maybe it wouldn't be a bad idea to increase this in general. So, yeah, let's do this. Okay, now, um, it is past 10 p.m., which means um, there's a few things we can do now. Let me have a look at that again. Confront the pigs and get your gun back, right. But... There's another one. Get yourself organized, which is also after 10 p.m. And then there's like two things I can only do um, without Kim. Ask Classy about Sunday night and talk to Joyce about the pail without Kim. <laughs> um, now I feel I probably won't be able to do all of this um, this evening, so I may have to postpone at least some of that stuff until the next evening. But of all these tasks, I think um, the most important one would be um, getting my gun back. So we're going to start with this one. Someone's been running around with your sidearm pretending to be a police officer. You must meet her near the old fish market at 22.00 and get your service weapon back. Just walk past the fishing village until you see the boardwalk. Okay, now that should be easy enough to find. Let's leave this place for now. I hope everyone here enjoyed my performance. But I have to get back to work. And I guess I should be able to f fast travel. Um, as a matter of fact, I may want to fast travel to the church because that's the closest to the boardwalk, right? So let's go here and then just... Uh, check out the entire boardwalk, I suppose. Right, so far... Oh, well, um... I was just about to say, so far I'm not seeing anything. What the hell? She has like a siren? That she's sounding by using that winch and yep she definitely has a gun and she's just widely flailing around with it okay well this is going to Put be your interesting hands where I can see them. well here we go the pigs the aging woman under a mountain of police paraphernalia mumbles to herself then notices you and reaches for the megaphone show me your hands this is the pigs Show me your hands! Right now! Show me Why? your hands! Right now! Why are you pretending to be a, a police officer? <laughs> and I have my hands kind of full at the moment. I can't really show them. Kim also doesn't seem to be impressed because his hands are still firmly behind his back. Scavenged, battery-powered police lights protrude from her back. The flickering light show reveals a gun in her shaking hand. Yeah, I can see that. Although, interestingly enough, it's in her left hand. Can she even aim with that? I mean, she might be a left-hander, but still. Her hand is trembling from some sort of neurodegenerative disease. Well, that makes it even less likely that she's able to um, hit us. Then again, we are very close, so... <laughs> Maybe we should uh, back off a little bit. <laughs> Madame, please drop the fire oh, oh, well. immediately. Now Kim is suddenly starting to become active. Wait, what should we do, Kim? Raise your hands. Easy, ma'am, take it easy. No, the tar is mine. I collected it. <laughs> no, I need this ledger to take notes. Yeah, um, my hands are kind of full, so... 
I can't put them away. Um, uh, yeah, please just take it easy. We're not here to harm you. Failure to comply. Suspect is displaying aggression. Oh dear. Officer, under duress! Just... Officer, under duress! There's no duress anywhere here. Her eyes bulge with terror. Veins protrude on her forehead. Yeah, yeah she's clearly um, not quite all right um, mentally. I am the police. Don't move. Don't move. Hands on your head. Suspect is armed and dangerous. <laughs> I am not armed. Well, I guess Kim is, but I'm only wearing a ledger and a back of Tom. I'm not moving. Ma'am, I need you to calm down. We just want to talk. <sighs> okay, I'm not sure if trying to be reasonable is going to work, but it might be a bad idea than trying to be confrontational. So please calm down. Lateral vascular neck restraint. Carotid sleeper. Mm. Carotid sleeper. Critically reducing blood from passing through the neck of the suspect. Yeah, good luck trying to do that. <laughs> be careful, detective. Don't do anything that might set her off. I'm trying to be as calm and reasonable as possible here. You're the one who draw a gun on her. <laughs> the situation looks bad. Calm yourself. Steady your breathing. All right, all right. You'll have to go for the gun sooner or later. Perhaps you can learn crucial facts before you do. Learn crucial facts? What crucial fact would that be? This is dangerous. You're 70% certain you always leave your gun loaded. 70% certain? This is the pigs. This is a red check. It cannot be retried. It is a pretty high chance, though. We can solve this peacefully. Please lower the weapon. Please identify yourself, ma'am. You are not the police. We are the police. Hmm. Hmm. I mean, rhetoric suggested to learn some facts first, and again, this is a pretty good chance. Maybe I should just go for it now before things escalate even more. Um, yeah, let's just let's just go for the gun. I'm going to take my odds here. All right. Yes. Here's the plan. You hurled a ledger in her face, already darting right, and immediately closed the distance. Left hand <laughs> grabs the barrel, right one breaks the wrist. I hurl the ledger in her face. I wonder how this would go down if I didn't uh, carry my ledger with me, or not you know, immediately in my hand. But okay, um, I'm going to trust hand-eye coordination on this. I mean, this was a formidable skill check, so let's do it. No, that won't be necessary. Look closer. The gun, all three barrels, red and blue light shining through. It's not loaded. Oh, well, in that case, um, I guess I didn't need to be that careful after all. Whisper, Kim, I'm almost certain there are no bullets in that gun. Oh my god, it's not loaded. The gun isn't loaded. Ma'am, the weapon you're holding is mine and I know it has no bullets. Go ahead, pull the trigger, I dare you. Um, yeah, maybe I'm going to tell Kim that he can put down his weapon as well de-escalate the situation. <laughs> then again, if she doesn't have any bullets in there, then uh, this whole situation isn't really that dangerous to begin with. Huh? My god, I think you're right. <laughs> um, yeah, ma'am, the weapon you're holding is mine and I know it has no bullets. At least visual calculus um, seems to think so. The woman looks at the weapon in disbelief, her eyes suddenly reddish with tears. She looks straight down the barrel and squeezes the trigger. Well, let's hope that visual calculus was right. This is a police issue. Okay. Police weapons have bullets. <laughs> this isn't real. What is this? Well, I guess maybe the people in the pawn shop may have taken the bullets out of the gun before they sold it. So even if Harry had bullets in there, um, maybe they were just removed at some point before they reached the pigs. Probably a good choice. Police don't always have bullets! What is this? Why did you sell me this? Maybe you 
you should have checked first. Then again, uh, it's for the better that you just return this gun to me. Grab the gun right now. This might be your only chance. Pick up your gun. I'm done with this gun. Leave it behind forever. <laughs> no, that's exactly why I came here. Let's pick it up. No one ever cares anymore. Why would they treat me like this? Maybe because I knew that you were going to do something stupid with it and they wanted to prevent you from doing that. I think they probably sold you the empty gun because they care about you. But I mean, this is kind of sad. Great gears are grinding to a halt. The machine is powering down. She's all out of jolt. Yep, so it seems... Oh, well, we need to figure out what to do with her now. Right, um, what can we do with her? Nobody's ever around. Nobody ever comes to visit me. Well, the reason for that might be that you're trying to shoot people as soon as they approach you. I am very sorry this is how life turned out for you. Gently touch her shoulder. What do you think is happen happening to her? Should we just arrest her? <laughs> yeah, I'm very sorry for you, I suppose. Her scratched skin is warm to the touch, but the person inside doesn't even hmm. know you're there. Yeah, what is happening to her? She's in a stupor. I've seen this before. God knows for how long. Could be days when they get like this. Oh, great. But why was she like this in the first place? That's a good question. Honestly, I don't know. Dementia, probably. Dementia and Channel 8 and loneliness. Mm. What's Channel 8? Not new generative generative disease. Yes, this is what happens when you listen to too many cop shows on the radio. Okay, I guess it's Channel 8. You're probably right. Loneliness. I guess we'll never know. It could be all of this. Probably a combination of all of it. Uh, and loneliness. Yeah. Looks like a bad case. But the question is what to do with her right now? I don't know, should we arrest her? I don't think there's any need for that. In her current state, and without a gun, she isn't really a threat to anyone. Uh, I guess that's right. We could let Titus know. This is a perfect problem for the local peacekeepers hmm. to handle. They might even know her family. Okay, well, um, I guess I'm down for that. Wait, I was really hoping I can give her one of those station call slips. Yeah, Titus sounds like the man for the job. I don't want to endorse the Hardy Boys' inflated sense of self-worth. They're not cops, we are. I think we can just leave her like this. She'll be fine. I mean, this is kind of true. But then again, we don't really know what to do with her either, other than arrest her. So if we can't help her, then I guess Titus may as well uh, try to do it. So sure. Then we can ask him once we get back to the whirling. But we have to hurry, because it's late and they might have already gone home. Okay, so um, I have to return to Hardy and talk to him about the pigs. Will do. But I think we are done here for now. Let's head out. This is done. You're right about that. Please, leave the radio on. It seems like a reflex, a half-remembered sentence. <laughs> okay. Reflex to what? Being left alone? Well, apparently so, because we're about to leave. And apparently that's what she used to say when people were leaving her, to leave the radio on so she could listen to her cop um, shows. Hmm. She stands motionless. Just a heap of clothes and flashes now. Maybe if you search her once more? Well, um, I guess I can try that. Maybe just talk to her again. The woman stands slumped. She looks catatonic under her mountain of <laughs> RCM paraphernalia. Is one of those things a police cap? Um, well, she apparently has a lot of police stuff on her. Um, I don't know, let's shake her shoulder. The old woman 
doesn't react to your touch. So I guess I'll pick up the RCM cap? She doesn't even flinch as you reach out and disentangle the familiar-looking lieutenant's cap from her mountain of RCM paraphernalia. All right. Oh, is that yours? Well, it might be. It's a lieutenant's cap. I am a lieutenant, so it could be mine. It's hard to say. It's been so long since you wore yours. I think so. Maybe, probably, you know me. My, no, it's ours. Yeah, seems. Um, yeah, it, it could be mine. It's your hat. <laughs> okay, apparently Kim is uh, sure that it is my hat. So, let's have a look at the hat. Do I want to wear it? the hat? Authority. Um... Yeah, I think I may um, uh, prefer that over encyclopedia, especially since I can't increase my authority in any other form. If I want more encyclopedia, I have uh, enough room to invest skill points into it. So yeah, let's switch the hat, and there it is, lieutenant's hat. Yep, I'm starting to look somewhat like a police officer, finally. Um, right, so... I should go back and talk to Titus about um, this poor woman. Of course, the question is, what do I want to do afterwards? Um, I mean, I kind of have to do this after 10 p.m., but since I'm pretty sure I won't be able to finish all of the things that I want to do, uh, I guess what I will do is I will first return to the fisherman's shack. I will send Kim away. Then I will return to the walling, talk to Titus, and then talk to Klaasia. And if I still have time after that, I will also talk to Joyce again. And my communist meeting may have to wait until the next day. Then again, I probably don't need him for the communist meeting, right? So I could do this um, alone as well. But yeah, let's um, first send Kim away. I guess I just have to enter my room. It's getting late and it's snowing. Time to call it a day. All right, Kim, you can go away for the night. Good night, officer. Okay, but... I'm going to continue doing stuff without you, Kim. <laughs> now, let's travel back to the Whirling. And let's talk to Titus. Okay, he's still here. Not sure when he's leaving the pub. Normally. The Coppernado is back. The Coppernado. What do you want? I have a task for you. There's an old catatonic lady in the old fish market on the other side of the bay. She needs help. Right. <laughs> What's that, Copper? You want us to help little old ladies now? <laughs> if you want to be the local inf law enforcement, these kind of things fall on your shoulders. Right. Yeah, yeah. We'll send someone out. Who is? Wait. It's the pigs, isn't it? Exactly. God. <laughs> Poor lady. Don't worry. We'll handle this. I think she got some family in Kurong or something. Bastards left her alone when she got sick. We've been getting complaints. <laughs> hey, wasn't Everard's B team looking for her the other day? They said something about her. I don't know. Finding something? <laughs> Evra's B team, huh? We're trying to get the gun from her. Well, good thing I got to her first. Yeah, I think you're right, Jean. She have something to yours, Pig. <laughs> Maybe? Whatever you do, do not admit to these punks you lost your gun. <laughs> you will suffer if you do. Okay, well, Authority, I will take your advice. She didn't have anything of mine. No? Well, whatever then, copper. <laughs> Titus chucks his beard down and wipes his mouth. Even though technically she also had my head, but 
Who is counting? No. They totally said what it was. What was it? Anyone remember? <laughs> Hopefully not. I don't remember. I was fucking drunk. Okay, well. Let me know if you figure it out back there. Now, anything else we can help you with? What's her name, her real name? Who was she? How did she get like this? Where'd she get all her cop gear? Sure, let's ask a few questions. So what's her real name? Auntie LaPlante, we always called her. Something LaPlante. Auntie LaPlante? Marianne, amigo. Okay. Marianne, amigo LaPlante. I'm pretty sure that wasn't part of the name. Be anything else you wanted to know? And who was she exactly? Wows. Like before. <laughs> Just an old lady. Her kids moved away years ago. Never come to visit. Never took her calls. She gets out every now and then. She did right by lots of us when we were kids. Always was a little <laughs> off. But still. Well, one more reason for you to help her, I suppose. Us kids? That must have been ages ago. She was better then. Clearly. And yeah, how did she get like this? Get? Wanted to be a cop, you mean? Well, <laughs> she... Shit. I don't actually know. <laughs> Anyone know why she started acting like a pig? Well, apparently because people left her alone and all she got was cop shows on the radio, so that was kind of a comfort to her because... At least they didn't leave uh, her alone. <laughs> no fucking clue. It's gotta be the crazy. Who'd want to be a pig? <laughs> Someone who wanted to set the world right before it ends. Ever think of that? More like who wouldn't. Cool uniforms, fast machines, picking heat. Sign me up. Law enforcement is a respectable occupation, so... <laughs> I can't but feel partially responsible for the unhealthy culture that poor woman latched onto. I'm sorry. Well, I'm pretty sure the cop shows weren't talking about someone like you. Um, maybe about Dick Mullen. But I'm not sure how much of a Dick Mullen you actually are. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think she just latched onto it because, you know, she was lonely and she was listening to these shows. If she had been listening to, I don't know, stuff about soldiers, she probably would have wanted to become a soldier or whatever. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, um, cool uniforms, fast machines, picking heat, sign me up. You are already signed up, Cerdo. <laughs> This guy is seriously damaged thee. Yeah, I guess you're right about that. Nah, don't worry about it, Al. The cops want to dress up and play police, man. Let them. <laughs> we'll keep doing the real work. All right. Uh, in that case, I hope you will be able to help her. And yeah, where did she get all her cop gear? I mean, she got the gun from the pawn shop. Not sure where she got my hat. Maybe she just found it somewhere. Dunno. She lives by the water. Shit washes up all the time on the beach. All right, fair enough. So, yeah, thanks for helping out with this one, Titus. No problem, old cop man. We take care of our mentally ill here in Martinez. <laughs> Ain't that right, boys? I mean, that's nice, but I had to remind you to actually do it first, so I'm a little bit skeptical about this. Why didn't you take care of her earlier? Sure enough, we're the real heroes on these streets. <laughs> okay, uh, as long as you help her, I'm fine. Anyway, uh, I'm off again. Okay, and I guess that's another task done. Now, um, let's go and talk to Classy, I suppose. I mean, I'm not entirely sure if I really still need to learn about what happened to my apartment, but who knows what information I can get from this. Oh, hang on a second. Let's not miss this. She's made around four months of payment for this room. Huh. Also, there's something inside here. Have I not checked this out before? 
Oh, I may have. This medicine cabinet is stocked with drugs. Oh, okay, yeah, I plus remember an this. old toothbrush. And There's a skill check, but um, I can't actually retry that one. Um, no, I need to go through here, right? All right, Classia, I'm back to talk to you. This time, all on my own. I was just thinking, what a nice day for questions pertaining to a murder investigation. I actually have another skill check here with much better odds. And as we've seen earlier, I can actually increase my drama significantly by using the proper outfit. So maybe before I go and talk to her about Sunday night, I will give that a try. <laughs> okay, so I need my dramatic necktie. I'm going to need the silk rope. Um, I will need better glasses, one that do not decrease my drama. Do I have any glasses that add to my drama? Not as far as I can tell. So I guess I'm just going to wear whatever just to get rid of the negative effect. Um, and we still have like the tank top. <laughs> this is still like the worst outfit ever. Um, I don't have like a hat for more drama, right? No, I have like a disturbing lack of hats in general for some reason. Anyway, um, that pushed my drama pretty over the top, so let's try this again. I was just thinking, what a nice day for questions pertaining okay. to a murder investigation. Here we go. That should be a home run. Who? What? Dear God, you've been lied to. She could have killed her lover and mm -hmm. lied to everyone. She's not candid at all. She smoke and mirrors and willow wisps. And suddenly this is the realization that you have. I mean, I guess she could have, but we have already kind of determined that the shot came from outside, right? So, hmm, I'm not convinced about this. She probably didn't give you her real name either. Why would she arrest her immediately? before she further entangles you in her web of lies. <laughs> a devil woman, you know? I think you didn't make that call to the station. Your real name isn't Classy Armandu. You, you wouldn't give me your real name if you're on the run. I mean, that's a good point. What if I told you you're under arrest, miss? Let's change the subject for the time being. Um, I can imagine that this is the case. Okay. Her voice cracks suddenly like there's a garrote around her neck. <laughs> okay, what? Okay, it's not. So you admit to it. I knew it's good. You can tell me the truth. Okay, how about the truth? You log your work every week. It's all transmitted to common, sir. I couldn't just beg you not to enter my name. <laughs> so I lied. All right, fair enough. Like I lied before. Like I did at LCSB. <laughs> I have to lie all the time. I'm so tired of it. So you're probably not even Miss Orania 37, are you? I am. They can <laughs> never take my sash and my scepter from me. I mean, it should be possible to research that, right? And find out who was Miss Orania in that year. And then we would be able to find out uh, her real name. Yes, they can. For <laughs> lying. <laughs> Drama is so dramatic. <laughs> anyway, would you tell me your real name? It's Katarzyna Alazie. Huh. The smile on her face is timid, almost painfully so. I mean, I don't really know if this is her real name, to be fair, but it's a new one. It's a grad name. Jims or Yugo Grad in origin. 
Not occidental at all. Smells of motor oil, tiger, economic desolation, and rock music infused <laughs> alcoholism. Okay, so does this mean she isn't even from Orania? It also makes Clasia almost an allochronym for Katarazina Alasia. Ah, interesting. Wait, Clasia is an abbreviation of Katarzyna Alasia. Hold on, Katarzyna Alasia is not even a Rania name, is it? It's not even Mundi, it's Grat. Finally we meet. I'll keep calling you Clasia. I'll just call you Miss Rania Disco Dancer, say nothing. Okay, well, this is like an abbreviation. It was a sentimental thing. I want it to be more me here, this time. So I used my nickname. I see. A nickname. Who gave you this nickname, Clasia? Ah, well, who did it? A teenage boy. A million years ago. <laughs> okay, I'm not sure if it's important. So, the name is Grad. Does this mean that you're from Grad as well? My parents were Zemsk immigrants, but I'm nationalized Oranese. Okay. All I remember is Oranie. Alasia is my father's name. Okay, I mean, that makes sense. Um, yeah, I guess I, I'm just going to keep calling you Klasia. It's easier anyway. That's cool. <laughs> okay, well, enough about that. She nods, her back straight, ready for whatever is next. You know, I think you didn't make that call to the station. Hmm... I feel I have no real reason to believe that, but I am kind of curious to see how she would react to that. I did. What is this? I called your desk or whatever it is. The numbers are all over town. Call 8102 for emergencies. Okay. There was an older woman on the other end. It sounded like she was smoking. She took my complaint. Hm. She coughed. That is the emergency's desk number. All right. Anyone could know that, sire, by looking around and calling the desk. I don't believe a single word she says. <laughs> Anyone could know a number and that someone coughed, it means nothing. Say nothing. <sighs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Her lying about her name made kind of sense, but why would she lie about this? Anyway, let's let's continue and let's see if this is going anywhere. I can give you the time, too. It was late. After midnight. 12.20. I know I have not been 100% truthful with you, but I am now. All right. Yeah, like I said, I don't really have any reason to doubt her on that account. So I don't think I have a reason to arrest her unless I find anything Else that is suspicious, so maybe I'm going to skip this for now. So yeah, let's change the subject for the time being. She slowly, slowly lights another cigarette and steadies her breath, as if in the presence of some tiger. All right. You are. This is not the end of this. Yeah, we will see. I mean, I still have to continue my investigation, and maybe we find more reason to believe that she hasn't been truthful. <laughs> Um, okay, first of all, let me switch back to my normal outfit. I am very, um, unbalanced now in favor of drama, so I would uh, prefer to get my more balanced uh, setup again. And the shirt. And that should be all. <laughs> Okay, um, we have a bit of time left in this episode, so maybe we can talk about Sunday at least um, for a while. I was just thinking, what a nice day for questions pertaining to a murder investigation. Well, actually, um, currently I want to talk about Sunday night. Ah, yes. The night before I saw you in the hallway and reminded you you're a police <laughs> officer. Right. The date of your re-entry into the fossil record. <laughs> re-entry into the fossil record? Yes, before I emerged like Paleolithic megafauna. <laughs> that is a great way to put it. 
It's one of the first things I remember doing in Elysium. Before you was only the room, the sound of the motor vehicles, steam in the bathroom and darkness. Did you hear something, sunny night, from my room? <laughs> I like this one. I emerge like Paleolithic megafauna. <laughs> like a mammoth. Wow. That's some creation myth stuff right there. <laughs> yes, I like it too. It's one of the first things I remember doing in Elysium. Well, I guess Elysium is supposed to be um, my existence here. Wow. Elysium. <laughs> you don't hear that term often. We, indeed. She's a glib girl, but she liked the wording. <laughs> okay. Anyway, let's move on. Did you hear anything on Sunday night? There was the usual ruckus. Loud disco music. <laughs> Did I have any visitors? I can't say. Probably not. Sounded like you were flying solo. You mentioned loud disco music. Yeah, that's all I need to hear of this. No, tell me more about the disco music. Oh, yes. Various artists. Ostentatious orchestrations prime among them. She arches her eyebrow, waiting for it to connect with you. Oh, that? Yeah. Whoa. The less said about <laughs> OO, the better. I'm guessing that's a band, but Encyclopedia doesn't like it. Oh, uh, we're huge, where I come from. I was very young then, of course. Like, seven. Life gets hard, but we go on. <laughs> then, doesn't life get hard because we go on? <sighs> Yeah, we go on all right. It's mostly, it mostly just gets hard, doesn't it? <laughs> Maybe we should stop going on then. Doesn't the going on cause the getting harder part? <laughs> well, not the way it is phrased here. We go on despite it being hard. It would probably be hard even if we do not go on. <laughs> um, so yeah, I guess we just go on, all right? I don't know about that. At around two o'clock, the disco stopped, and there was a change of pace. Okay, so what happened? A slow, sad song started playing. Like organ music on repeat. That went on for quite a while. Some of that time, you were yelling along to it. Well, I guess I was practicing my, my great uh, performance here. Playing the smallest church in San Seo. Yes, there was a church in there. A really small church. <laughs> like the smallest, saddest church in the whole world. It was about that. And also... Okay, so he was singing that song. What else? That it doesn't matter anymore and that we're alone now. It was difficult to tell. The song itself was very quiet and soft, but... You sounded like a wounded boar, sir. <laughs> it was hard to understand what you were singing on top of it. So, was I not singing like the proper lyrics, but I made up my own lyrics to it? I'm sorry, when you say wounded, do you mean that in a cool way, like a wild beast? <laughs> then what happened? I've heard enough. Um, I mean, she specifically mentioned a wounded boar, so... <laughs> make of that what you will, if you consider that cool. Um, yeah, then what happened? Then you started screaming and trashed the place. Okay, so apparently I've been singing to that song and then I just went full rock star on that room. Are you sure I wasn't being sorted? <laughs> That's so me. What did I do? You're making this up. I would never behave like that. Um, I probably do. A window was smashed. The tape player, probably. The song stopped. And furniture, too. A real destructathon. There was screaming. Then I think you passed out. Was there anything else? Please tell me there wasn't anything else. It prides me to hear this. Tell me there was more. I don't know, what more would you expect after passing out? But still, was there anything else? There was. I think you screamed that you didn't want to be this type of animal what? anymore. I may have misheard, but it was sort of memorable. 
This type of animal? Well, that is kind of odd. I went out afterwards. Everything was quiet by then. Around four or five. And that was it. Okay, well, um, honestly, everything she told me is kind of what I expected. I mean, we saw the broken tape player, we saw the uh, destroyed rooms. So <laughs> this is pretty much the most uh, likely thing that would have happened uh, that evening. So, thank you, I guess. No problem, sir. Okay, well, um, that's apparently all I had to do, and no real, you know, amazing um, discovery here, except the part about not wanting to be that kind of animal. That was kind of weird. Anyway, I may return to you about the lies you told me, if I have a reason to believe that you have been lying to me about anything else than your name. But I think for now I'm going to leave you. And yeah, so that task is done. And we actually still have uh, a good amount of a good amount of time left. So I guess I will move on and talk to Joyce. However, that can wait until the next episode. So let's make a cut here. As always, thank you for watching and see you again next time.